Okay, guys, number one rule of software, we all know it, is you want to be lazy. Never learn anything that you don't have to. And today, I'm going to teach you the shortcut to learning rest and spread syntax. And rest and spread syntax, at the end of the day, is literally just three dots. Three little magical specs on your computer screen control a lot because depending on how you actually use these three dots will determine a lot. And I'm going to start with rest because we're not violating any rules and I'm starting with the easiest. The easiest way to really understand rest is to think about it like a factory. Raw materials go in and finished goods come out. And the raw materials that are going to go in are just numbers or strings that look just like this. They are not in the form of an array or any type of collection, just literally raw materials, raw numbers and strings. They're going to go in and the next way that they are going to come out is going to be in an array. 99% of the time when you actually see the rest parameter or rest syntax is going to look just like this. It is going to be in the form of a parameter. And the reason that we actually have a rest is so that we can input a bunch of numbers just like this. And when they actually go into the function, they are going to be turned into an array. So if I pass all of these numbers into this function, what it is going to console log is going to look just like this. It is going to be just like I said, an array. So rest parameter turns actual numbers and strings into an array. Big whoop de doo What is even the reason that we actually do this? Well, the reason that we do it is because if you have a bunch of parameters, just say you had six parameters here and they all are just representative of just random letters, just like this. As you can imagine, if you had a very complicated function, which can happen a lot, if you just have a bunch of parameters like this, this is going to get unwieldy because you will have to do things like this. You will have to console log each individual letter here. And you could imagine how cumbersome it would be to have to go into your actual function here and console log every single parameter that is passed into this function. And that is the reason that we have the actual rest parameter. The rest parameter is going to look exactly like this too. It is going to come at the end of the actual function it will never be at the beginning. It's never going to come right here. It's never going to be at the in the middle. It is always going to be at the end. Okay, so let's talk about the spread operator. The spread operator is the exact opposite of the rest operator. With rest operator, you are going from a set of numbers to an array. But with a spread operator, it is the exact opposite. You are going to go from array to a set of numbers and think about it like this you are pretty much blowing the brackets off of an array just think about it as you are literally strapping some type of c4 to an array and you are going to blow the brackets off of it and it is going to be turned into just a set of numbers so if we were to take this actual array right here and we were to add a spread to our array of rats right here. What is going to happen is that if we console log this array of rats, the ellipses are going to do the exact same thing that I said it was going to do. What's going to be logged is just a set of actual strings. So let's go ahead, let's go in VS Code because if you don't actually practice the rest in the spread operator, it's not going to make any sense. Okay, so first things first, let's just go into here and let's test out the easiest example that we possibly can with rest. We'll start with rest first because it's the easiest. We're going to have a function right here and this function is going to have an actual rest operator in it. We are going to have a fat arrow and we are going to console log just the raw data that we actually get back. And remember that you never want to add the three dots again. You want to actually just have the variable right here because if you add the three dots again, what's going to happen is it's going to turn it into a spread and it's not going to be an array like we want. So first thing, let's just actually run this function and what it's going to do is it's just going to log an array because we are just console logging the actual rest parameter that we are turning from this just raw set of numbers just like this, and it's going to console log the actual rest. And when we actually console log it, what we're going to get back is, you guessed it, an array. 
This is kind of low level. We need to think a little bit more big brain than this. I am going to take this collection that we got, this array that we just made, and I am going to perform a map on it. And in this map, I am going to do what the function is originally intended to do. We are going to triple all these numbers. So if I go into here and I just triple these numbers, what you're going to get is an actual array. And I need to actually console.log it so that we can see the results. Otherwise, it's just going to exist in memory. And when we console log the result that we get back, we get indeed an array of tripled results. Okay, so next we are going to practice the spread operator. And because the spread operator is the exact opposite of the rest, we need to start with an array. And in this array, my favorite example is to make an array of rats. First thing that I'm going to have is I'm going to have a wolf rat. I'm going to have a cute little fancy rat, little pet rat that we can have in a cage somewhere. Then we can also have a cool Norwegian rat that exists in the mountains. <laughs> okay, so we've got a cool little array of our favorite rats. Feel free to actually use whichever ones that you want to. I'm going to I'm actually going to comment this out so that our console is clear. Okay, but we also want our rats to be badass, but we also want them to be rich. We don't want any lame broke ass rats in our example here. We want our rats to be badass, but we also want them to be super rich. So I am going to make an array of luxury badass rats just like this. And we want to actually combine our array of rats with luxury items. So we will have Rolex and we will put Tom Ford glasses right here. So our rats are rocking Tom Ford. And then we are going to actually combine our array of rats so that we can have luxury badass rats. And when we actually do this, when we actually console.log our luxury badass rats, watch what happens. We will actually combine them and we will actually have a array of luxury badass rats. Watch this. And as you can see, we've got all of the actual ingredients necessary for our rats to be badass. We've got Rolex, Tom Four, we've got some wolf rats, fancy rats. We've got the whole squad lined up, but this is only for arrays. We actually want to do this with objects as well too. So let's do this with, let's just say turtles. So I'm just going to go ahead and get rid of this right here. And what we're going to do is we're going to have an actual object of turtle. Let's just say our name of our turtle is going to be a snapping turtle, just like this, and is dangerous. We need to put a nice bull, whether it is dangerous or not. And of course, snapping turtles are incredibly dangerous. And what we're going to do is we're going to do the exact same thing that we did with our actual array, where we combine arrays, but we're going to do the exact same thing with objects. So what I'm going to go do down here is I'm going to make what's called a clone. And that is the exact thing that we are going to do right now. So I'm going to pass in my turtle object right here. And then I'm going to have another property, another actual location right here. And we're going to say our turtle is from Ohio. <laughs> okay, so right here, what's going to happen is you're going to watch the magic of the spread operator. We are going to be able to combine this object into this object right here, and you will see the magic of the spread operator. So I'm going to go into here. I'm going to go ahead and console log it. And as you can see, our turtle is going to be dangerous. Its location is going to be Ohio, and we have the exact same property name of snapping turtle. We've combined our objects. We've completed spread and we've learned a lot today anyways hope that you guys enjoyed this if you did make sure to smash that like button smash that subscribe button and as always thank you for watching